The best Mark Silvestri artwork is from the Wolverine comic book. Welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Wolverine number 34 is under the microscope today. We're looking at uh, Mark Silvestri throwing his fastball. Got to let you guys know, we are a daily YouTube channel. More than 1,700 videos at your disposal. We might have talked about some of your favorite comics. Hit the magnifying glass on the front page of the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel. Give the channel a search. Check out those episodes. We're getting close to 100,000 subscribers. With your help, we'll get there sooner than later. So make sure you subscribe to this channel if you get some value out of it. It helps the channel in a big way and uh, makes it possible for people to see the videos a little bit more. Got to goose those algorithms. You know what I'm talking about. If you want these videos before anybody else, though, become a King K Faber on our Patreon. We're hanging out in an exclusive uh, chat room as we live stream the recording of these videos. And once we uh, wrap up for the day, get to editing. We deliver these videos uh, fully produced to the Kings before anybody else gets access. And there will be some, there will, will be a little kayfabe affection going on here today on Cartoonist Kayfabe. Jimmy, as we take a look at uh, Wolverine number 34, you cited it as uh, your first uh, Mark Silvestri Wolverine and, may, and maybe, maybe your favorite. Not my first, but definitely my favorite. He had done three issues before this, but I was such a Mark Silvestri Mark. Like this was his book after X-Men. Right. And I remember being like, kind of mad at how they handled it. In a weird way, it's sort of what they did with Sylvester, or with uh, Claremont, uh, you know, where they kind of dumped him off of X-Men unceremoniously. Right. I felt like they did the same thing with Sylvester because he was my first X-Men artist. Mm -hmm. And I thought, this is great, loved it. Uh, when he gets to Wolverine, it's almost even a little bit more choppy, uh, scratchy, you know, I say quickly drawn, but I don't know that that's the case. Maybe quickly inked. Whatever it is, it felt raw and has this energy and i mean it's on display right there you know like look at that arm muscle of just all kinds of stuff happening he still is uh, adhering to good storytelling here he's still pulling in the best of what he learned from uh, john buscema like if you look at the old king conan and stuff that Sylvester drew he was totally cribbing uh, like buscema yes. vibes so uh we said it before say it again dumb down for your audience double your dollars like this is not what the kids were buying in like 1996 he Jim lead up his shit, went full Gilbert, and uh, triple or quadrupled his income. But the man had chops. And yes. uh, you were making suggestions that maybe it's quickly inked. Now, this is uh, when the book is, is monthly. But he drew at a pace that was able to uh, accept a bi-weekly schedule. So the dude was able to draw 44 pages a month. I think he could draw pretty fast. Yeah, and, and man, all credit to Dan Green who inked this and a lot of those X-Men issues. And like to me, that's that secret ingredient. And it's the ingredient that didn't go to image with Sylvester. Right. And, and really bummed me out. But I, I we'll see lots of good stuff in here I, of those two collaborating. I think a part of it was sharing share that studio, being able to look over somebody's uh, shoulder and somebody who's more financially successful than maybe, uh, you know, you got to pull on some tricks. But look at what this man is able to do. I mean, he's able to pull from like, really like the best of Milk Caniff. And, and I don't know if we sit Mark Silvestri down and say, hey man, what are your thoughts on Milk Caniff? For Be some reason, that came to mind throughout this entire issue, but I don't know that he's down with that pedigree. You know, I, I, he's, he's so, he's so uh, methodical in his, in media trained at this point that he doesn't give up the ghost that way. You know, that would require us to extract some of that stuff out of him. But he, he has cartooning built in to this artwork, some of that you see slightly carry over, but there is a tremendous amount of uh, craft that he's able to, to pull off here that, that he just, that goes goes by the wayside and the image works. And uh, off the bat, I'm gonna tell you guys, man, Wolverine number 34, excellent fucking comic. This is a this is a excellent issue of monthly comic. Buy our books, keep the videos coming to you on a regular basis. Jimmy has Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive, Street Angel Princess of Poverty, True Crime Funnies, 1986 Zine, BW Zine. Get those at his website. Hulk Grand Design, Treasury is out there. Trade paperback coming soon. I have Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus. X-Men Grand Design Trilogy. Red Room Crypto Killers comes out the end of February. Anti-Social Network, Red Room Trigger Warnings, and the Switchblade Shorties comic strip coming to you online on a daily basis. Now that we're done uh, showing off our books, get them and back to the video. One and done, too. And here's some of the thoughtfulness of the cartoonist, right? We're having a flashback. This guy escaped, shot his way out of a courtroom, and you see no shadows, no black spotted. 
whenever we get to the foreground, the guy that's narrating the story, you got heavy black on the side of the face. You have it in his shirt. You know, it separates that foreground background. If you were looking at this in black and white in the essentials, it would still work. You're right. You know, you don't, you're not reliant on the cartoonist, but he does a lot of this stuff too. Just really thoughtful spotting of blacks in his compositions and variety. Look at, you know, close up, medium shot, long shot. Yeah, I thought I thought everybody's firing on all cylinders, including the letterer. But uh, the the story it's a it's a good pulp comic. You know, Larry Hama at the helm. It's so far out, but in terms of pulp comics, yeah, absolutely, it's, it's fantastic. And uh, you mentioned the cartoony stuff. I see the contrast between our young Mo Mountie that has kind of this long head versus our bad guy, our heavy, who has like a very squatty kind of head, almost square shape, right. And it, I remember having this book, I think it was Jack Ham, and it was like how to do caricatures. And it was all the different shapes, you know, that you could make heads. And Silvestri has that, like as a cartoonist, that kind of exaggeration and fun, it's on display here. When he's at Marvel, he has that. Totally. Mike Mignola is out at this point. Like, like he is he is developing his chops. Cosmic Odyssey might have already happened. Uh, and at this time, 1990, Mignola was an artist's artist. Uh, Man, who do we have on the record who was saying that uh, Todd McFarlane was trying to talk the other guys out of bringing Mignola into the I think it's the, the Liefeld Comics Journal interview that we did recently. And these kind of shapes, this would not be in a Silvestri comic if it wasn't for Mignola. Yeah. He did not do these kind of silhouettes earlier in his uh, career. The shadows of the trees on snow, phenomenal. Yeah. And some props to the colorist. That light blue on top of the snow with a lot of white snow still left. It's just so, so effective. We have flashbacks with, with some of the uh, Royal uh, Mounted Canadian police or however you string those words together. Uh, dude was in the military. Uh, there, there's um, like urban legend, uh, folklore kind of elements built into this. And it's suggested, like I think Hama early on in the story Wants you to think that what's the thing called the black uh, the, the hunter and the, the darkness. hunter in the darkness. He wants you to think that it's wolvy. Yeah, they have some history there. Be because we we get you know ten to twelve pages in, and uh, they mention this hunter in the darkness a bunch of times. Uh, you see Wolverine hunting and things, so you assume it is him. Look at the great coloring as we get into twilight. Yeah. You know, we talk about don't do the blue skies. They're doing the purples and the reds and the pinks on your sky. Yeah, I need to see who that is because they deserve some credit they for do. this, man. Ah, Glynis. Mm -hmm. Oliver, not Ween at this moment. It's it's very sharp. You know, even the transition into night now where it's like purples have replaced those magentas. And it's a page turn, you know, like where you, where you get your little revelation. Yeah, hopefully this video does well because I would dig into actually some other Sylvester Wolverine Absolutely. stories. Yeah, the LCD. story that precedes this is really strong and he's on it for probably at least a year, maybe more. He does a, he does probably 15 issues or, or 20 issues. He does he does way more than that because when it gets into the bi-weekly stuff, I think I think you start to rack up your numbers. He definitely gets up to issue 50 and he starts at 31, so, so it's, it's a good run. Yeah. Is it Tex who's right after him? Or is it like Dwayne Turner? There are little fill-ins of like yeah. a, an artist here, an artist there, because that's right. Tex follows and like he does six issues or so, and I love those too. Right. That image right there, right? Like I think I think this comes from Cycle of the Werewolf, maybe? Like I, don't I, know. I I think there's a I think there's a um rights in image that has this vibe. Maybe maybe it's creep show, the little uh Lycanthrope in the box. Does this remind you of Frazetta? Yeah, I feel yeah, like the yeah, figure absolutely. like rising up out absolutely. Is, is a good one. Uh, again, I compliment the colorist. This flashlight effect of yellow, pretty simple, but works well. This is one place I'm not sure of. And it's the Hunter in Darkness is ripping, basically ripping Wolverine's guts out. Yeah. But it happens at the same time as we have like a rifle shooting. Right. And it feels like the bullet's going through the middle of that panel, but it's not. That's, right. That's an independent thing. A great little piece of dialogue here. Got to hold everything in until my mutant healing pa power can kick into overdrive. <laughs> Got to explain everything to the potential nine-year-old readers out there that, that might not put it together. I mean, that's that's in your sort of, you know, right-wing, like, pulp uh, paperbacks. Mm -hmm. have has Like, my camera books have, have, have that dialogue in there. That's and, a good call. And Hama is a dude, he shows up. You, if you want to manifest Larry Hama into your life, if you have a Facebook account, 
just ask which Elmore Leonard book should I read next? Nice. And then and then he manifests it to your life and will tell you exactly which one you need to start following. So so he pulls from those traditions. How about that ad for a time time capsule? Yes, sir. There it is, man. It's uh, that's series one. Never had it, had my hands on those. It's ones. such a ground zero this this time period for like the uh, the big speculator boom that is mounting. There's a lot of it in here. So one of the backstories that's in here is uh, this the 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 more grizzled uh, senior uh, Mountie. Is uh, he's losing it and he's he's recalling a time when uh, he gets jammed up in uh, they were doing some sort of uh, nighttime air raid parachuting down got caught up in the trees somebody somebody is like trying to help him down but they put their little lighter on and what do we know man like I've read enough uh, military comics right that like you don't in the dead of uh, night allow any illumination to be seen, man. So Can't give away your position, and that's what he does. Yes. Uh, but there's one lone Canadian trooper fighting for the motherland, I believe, man, fighting for Britain with a knife who runs into those guys straight away. Yeah, it's a fun device, that old man, and it is really very pulpy, this this story, the and thing. the one that precedes it. You know, I think that's something that, that Hama figured out. That was the pitch whenever it was like, hey, do you want to do Wolverine? I think that's what he brought to it was that kind of like old, old, uh, you know, male paperback reader kind of sensibility. You know, I was thinking about it because like even on page one, you know, nothing cleanses the soul, blah, 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 especially my roots because I can't remember half of them. So that's a uh, what Claremont would call a tabula rasa, meaning a blank slate. That right. you could put stuff onto. But there, that could be trouble also. You know, you could you could take this damn character in the wrong direction. Yeah, it's a lot of what's going on. This is in the heels of, of uh, Weapon X had just come out, right. and I think everybody was like, oh, what are we doing with Wolverine's past? So if you noticed, Wolverine isn't uh, eviscerating this old beast. He's kind of just uh, you know pushing it away, letting it chomp on his arm and things, because we're going to jump into another flashback sequence, because now these characters have history. So Wolverine is everywhere, because uh, that's the... Uh, we'll give up the ghost. Like, he has history with the paratrooper guy. Turns out that he's the dude running uh, headstrong yes, of course. with a knife, killing all the Nazis. For, for having such a mysterious past, I feel like we need to just break out like the push pins and the thread. Right, Because right, right. we've got all kinds of information coming out, and this is just one issue. We've got about four pieces of his history. There is a uh, kit, like a, it's not a children's book, like a picture book. It's like a 15-point font, like novel, that was the Wolverine novel and what what they did was they took every comic book appearance that had anything from the past that was suggested so the entire weapon x is in there but anything like like this these beats and then the lady like wrote a linear wow story and, like i loved it as a kid man. <laughs> it's so funny how about that for sylvester trying to do like the dog emoting totally you know, being in pain or whatever yeah we're getting into a uh, chaz truog uh animal man comics right here but uh, i was marveling at Dude, fucking Megaton Man showing up. I love it. I love it. It's one of my favorites. And a lot of Frazetta on display in that figure, Absolutely. too, in the shadows. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just great body language. Like, he really knows how to twist these characters up and make them look super heroic. Like, look at that. It is pretty silly that it's, whenever it's time to go into the Pacific uh, Northwest snow, let's let's make sure I'm wearing the costume. Yeah, <laughs> like, the, so what a, like, what a contrivance. And and Larry Hama is such a, such a man's man that, like, he just clowns it himself. They do. I think I think the old Mountie makes fun of it, and I think that guy who's on the run makes fun of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you have to build it in. It's a Wolverine comic. And they were able to sort of get along, you know, for a year or something with the patch thing. And but that was to get Busemo on the hook, who fucking hates superheroes. You see a very tiny glimmer of future Silvestri. With these kind of marks mm -hmm. right there, super little tiny glimmers. There it is again. Why, why do it once if you could do it twice? That that uh, cycle of the moon or whatever that uh, Bernie writes in peace was. I, I I know. I'm thinking of something. These Dan Green marks. It's the only time he does these, but they're sort of the most knifish looking marks. And I wonder if we can put the Kniff pieces of this, like on, on Dan Green. Like, I think he I has... I was going to say, that would be the other place it might come from. Yeah, I think he has a strong pedigree. Because when you point at this, I just think, like, Scott Williams would oh, be mage. so different. 
you, you know, if you had him going over this art. Right. There's a real organic quality to the marks that Dan Green makes. Yeah. And you see it in like the hands, you know, you see it in a lot of places and it just really appealed to me. I used to uh, email with him a little bit and, and he's no longer with us. Yeah, rest in peace. Um, but he was always a great guy in terms of like the correspondence and stuff because I was just so interested. I don't know anybody that really inked like him, you know, because this is not like a Marvel House style inking. You know, it's not Joe Sinnott that's, that's right. being channeled on these pages. It's really a pretty unique approach to inking. And if you look at Dan Green on other pencilers, I don't see it as much. That's true. Like it's a synergy between he and Mark Silvestri. Whatever Silvestri is putting down in pencil, those two just created something that I don't, I don't know where else you find it. And isn't it sweet in the days when there's like practical sound effects yes. and, and that type of lettering treatment? I think this is probably like Ames guided in black and then they do some inversion. I seem to remember on Xeroxes you could yep. even do that, do it like an inverted thing. So that, like that, that one's a paste up. But man, that just, it's so organic. Uh, let's tie things up in terms of like the thematic rhythm. We mentioned the flashback sequence earlier, you know, the, 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 the trooper who was trying to help our guy who was jammed up in the, in the trees flick the lighter. Well, our main baddie's going to flick the lighter and give up his location to, uh, to the, the hunter of the night. So we're getting back to the past and, and the, uh, the old man is racking his brain. Who is that guy? He had a Canadian name. You ever think of Logan as a Canadian name? I only do because of Wolverine. Yeah, right. <laughs> Wolverine put that name on the map in Canada. Another heavy Frazetta-like panel there in the bottom left corner. And uh, the, the prose here of like what that corporal or what that old man is hearing in the flashback of like meat and knife and bone cutting up is, you know, old, old, old Wolverine in World War II doing damage with just his knife cutting these people in pieces. But it is that pulpy language, the purple prose of violence. Now, in our recording session for the day, which I think people understand that we record a bunch of episodes at once and so that we can put them out daily, there was some Frazetta talk uh, before, like, in terms of the, these, these grand fight scenes where people pile up. It is hard to do. Like, it is a very hard thing to compose. You think that, like, you've seen it a million times in comics, so you think that that gets a part of the tool set. Almost every single one of those times you saw it wasn't artistically well composed. Hal Foster can do it, and he is the senpai to Frazetta. So it's like both of those guys. You have Hal Foster, you have Frank Frazetta, who who have those chops. Their uh, Kirby can do it, but his is so stylistic that if you crib Kirby, it's going to look like Kirby. But at least if you crib Frazetta, like the anatomy might be closer to the way that you draw anatomy. But um, it is it is uh, definitely something to be uh, commended because you, you just can't take it lightly. I really like the lettering in this comic, too. It's really a, a different time period and maybe the end of this time period when comics were built this way. Yeah. You know, and, and the guys who are doing it at that point, they're sort of at the apex of what that method is, that Marvel monthly kind of action comic method. Yeah. So to kayfabe effect, you guys, uh, I can't recommend highly enough the uh, essentials that collect you know 20 plus issues of uh, these these particular comics uh, any of the first three wolverines will, will do you well what what happens after a while is when they start going digital color and stuff i don't think they have photo stats of black and white pages so it'll be like grayscale yeah that's so disappointing and, th and those and, th and those are trash but uh these are done early enough where you know the computer was not really involved so you get oh, some colon, colon. you get a little bit of uh Buscema in here but the bulk, himself i think the bulk of it oh this is a uh, burn and klaus i believe or maybe just uh maybe just klaus might be klaus and tom palmer oh wow that's interesting i remember getting this issue uh, at a at a flea market I still have it, enjoy it, love it. And you know, the first volume is Busima. There's a Gene Colon. There's a big uh, John Byrne run in it. Yeah. It's a nice, all, all these first three volumes all have some really nice artwork. There's a McFarlane. This is the beginning of the Sylvester run. And it's a lot uh, uh, more graphic, I think, than like his X-Men stuff, choppy or darker. Right. I absolutely love it. These first four issues are probably my favorite Sylvester. Yeah, we should do that as like a Sunday video. Yeah, I agree. Because you know, it's him fighting Yakuza. It's it, really good. It's sort of tying up the patch stuff so that we can uh -huh, so does. that we could go off into uh, more uh, superhero territories and stuff. 
but uh, you see the the uh, you see the relationship between Dan Green and Mark Silvestri so beautifully in the pristine black and white that I think that you, you kind of you got to have these to study. And uh, the third volume, it continues some some uh, Silvestri, but then we're going to get the um, Mark Tex yeah. stuff in there. Yeah, it's it's a fun run. Like I was buying these in real time, man, for whatever that is, five years worth or something, you know, that run. Yeah. And uh, I really like Mark Tex's run as well. So it's, it's a, it's a good, uh, it's a good series. I had that action figure, dude. They made, they, <laughs> they made the, the cyborg Wolvie uh, action figure. I, th I, is the girl's name LCD or is it RCD? I think, I, you know what? I think it's LCD. There's, yeah. There's I a, never, I never said it out loud to get that. There's a, um, there's a goddamn, the chick, the chick transformer is like one of them. Is it RCD? I forget. Like some sort of digital computer related something or other. Unless, unless they're both LCDs. Yeah, really. Good ideas, <laughs> man. She is, man. They come in a series. I don't remember if she had a toy, but maybe. Because because this was this was huge. Uh, reading, Look at this is like I think that's of, again. if uh, of uh, Mazza Kelly comes to mind too. You know, it's just like really phenomenal negative space. Yeah, it's a shape really. Because mm -hmm. uh, like Mazza Kelly knows the figure so well that it would look like just the greatest Olympian or something like that. When these issues were coming out. This era of comics is when I was like very, very regularly on my own, on the pedal bike, going to the Rite Aid with all of my lunch money from school. And knowing that it wasn't really an exact four weeks for the next one. I swear sometimes it would be three. Sometimes it would be five or six. Yeah. Uh, so I would just go religiously and always be disappointed that like, oh, I already have this Wolverine until you did it, until the next one is out and the rush of that. It's almost nothing to beat it. I would call, it was so great in a way having that surprise. I would call the place in town where I would go because like they'd get their call. I can't remember Wednesday or Thursday, whatever it was, the same day each week. I would call and be like, hey, did you get an X-Men? Did you get this or that? Can you save me one of those? And nobody else is even buying them, right. I don't think. They had to be so annoyed because it was like a store that sold cigars and newspapers. Right, right. You know, like they weren't interested in looking at the spinner rack to tell me if the new issue of Wolverine came out. Yeah, this is cash wrap materials, man. <laughs> when, when you're selling $8 cigars, yeah, exactly. so $1.75 comic is a drop in the bucket. So annoyed. Good to go. I am. Okay, Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. We are on the road to 100,000 subscribers. Thank you very much. And if you get anything out of these videos, if you dig what we produce, make sure that you follow the channel and uh, it helps us out a lot. The videos are ultimately brought to you by the books that we make, but we have a Patreon and the Patreon is there for you to mitigate the kayfabe effect, become one of our biggest supporters and you get all the videos before anybody else. You also uh, have access to the live stream recording session as we produce these videos. Link in the description below for uh, the, the Patreon. We have more than 1,700 videos out there, and we might have talked about some of your favorite comics. So make sure you hit the magnifying glass on the front page of the Kayfabe YouTube channel. Check out the channel. Pop in your favorite titles. Check out those episodes. If we haven't talked about your favorite comics then by all means, put something in the comments so that we can push those books a little bit higher on our uh, to-read piles. Ultimately, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. Right now, I've been working on Switchblade Shorties, which is my daily comic strip. You could find it on all of our social media platforms, the Kayfabe stuff, uh, my own personal uh, social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. There's a dedicated Switchblade Shorties Instagram, and it's also uh, on Webtoon in its uh, full archive. The Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is uh, is going quick, and uh, it is 45 bucks on Amazon at the moment. Uh, so scoop it up if you haven't. Uh, it's almost freaking half off, so you can't beat that with a stick. Best book I made to date. X-Men Grand Design Trilogy Trade Paperback. Contains all of my X-Men Grand Design works. Uh, it's the one place where you can get it all inside of one handy-dandy cover. Red Room Crypto Killers is coming out at the end of February part of a trilogy of trade paperbacks, uh, but you don't need to start with the first one because each contains four self-contained stories. So if you grab this first, Crypto Killers, 
then uh, at a later time you could read the Antisocial Network or Trigger Warnings. Jimmy, why don't you let the people know what's out there? I have Street Angel, Deadly Squirrel Alive, and Street Angel, Princess of Poverty, both available right now from Image Comics. These are also self-contained totally. One is black and white, one is full color. Uh, the Homeless Ninja on a Skateboard, perfect for the action comics or superhero comics fan in your life. The big news for me is the self-published comics, True Crime Funnies, the 1986 zine, and the BW zine, celebrating the 80s black and white explosion. These are self-published. You can get them on my website, jimrug.com, or my Patreon, patreon.com slash jimrug. They've been out of print and unavailable. They will be back and available March 6th. So if you miss those, March 6th, you can pick those up. And Hulk Grand Design. This is a treasury-sized edition out of print. However, the trade paperback coming out in May this year, and that is available now for pre-order. So let Marvel know they need to keep these things in print by pre-ordering that one wherever you pre-order books. The books are the most important way to kind of keep things uh, on, on, the, on the tracks. But there are some direct ways to support Cartoonist Kayfabe. Jimmy, let the people know. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, hats, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. There you have it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, support the channel, keep the vids rocking. Jimmy, give them final marching orders, and we'll be on our way. Read more comments.